Joining me now, folks, economist extraordinaire David Bonson. And David, you actually wrote a piece in National Review titled Against a Social Justice Fed, where you laid out your concerns about the Fed, adding things like climate change and racial uh, wealth gap to their already uh, over, uh, overburdening plate, if you will. Explain your main concerns. Well, there's two things that I kind of talk about. I think first and foremost is just the dual mandate of the Fed. It's a pretty ambitious mandate. Full employment, price stability, these things are apparently in their mind often at odds with one another. I think that's a realistically ambitious, shall we say, dual mandate that they already have. You look to the pre-financial crisis, they were totally unable to foresee the housing bubble, the credit crunch. So I I look now at them trying to predict the weather in 25 years, and, and I find it unrealistic. Now, to Chairman Powell's credit, he did downgrade this expectation around them being climatologists, but there is clearly a very large pressure for the Fed to become woke and around social justice, racial equity, these different things that are very nebulously being attached to their mandate. It's a very bad idea for those of us who value yeah. price stability. You know, uh, with yeah. that in mind, though, I, I, could, I feel like Leo Brainerd or maybe the uh, Mary D- Daly or someone like that uh, sort of casting a shadow over uh, Jerome Powell as he really has made public how much he loves his job. And I think he would love to be reappointed by President Biden. Think he could be forced or nudged into this more aggressively, the climate role? Well, there's no question that that's what Lel Brainerd is playing behind the scenes. And and I happen to know as a fact that she was very disappointed to not get the Treasury Secretary uh, nod. And, And, of course, former Chairwoman Yellen ended up getting that job. But what she definitely does now want on her business card is Federal Reserve Chair. And in normal circumstances, she might be a good candidate. I happen to not have the same monetary philosophy she does, sure. but she's a pedigreed, capable person. However, what you're dealing with here is them using the political and the social and these other categories for her to try to nudge ahead, because really Chairman Powell would not be considered for removal apart from her kind of playing some of this hardball. I think it's very political, right. and, and the woke card is the one to play these days. I, I need your expertise. Tell us what's going on. The 10-year yield is coming down. By now, it was supposed to be at 2.5%. According to almost every guest I had two or three months ago, the two years coming up like gangbusters. What's the message there? Well, you are always so nice to me when I'm on air, so I hate to have to ask you to be nice to me again, but you did have one guest a couple <laughs> months ago that most certainly said the tenure is not going to two and a half because I don't buy the inflation story. And the reason I don't buy it right. is a bad reason. It's because I think the government has gotten in the way of growth. You should have a 2.5% tenure. You should have a 4% tenure because people need a higher return hurdle for the future because other projects are expected to make so much money. This idea that low, low rates forever is a good thing is not true. The reason we have it is because people don't expect growth in the future because of excessive government debt. And so what you've seen the last couple of days is humiliating to the inflationistas. Commodity prices get hammered. And the yield curve dramatically flattens in response to the Fed supposedly learning the inflation story. The, the, at the end of the day, we're dealing with post-crisis type right. economics right now. Right. Right. David, I got to squeeze it in, but please, I got 30 seconds. But you were the first person to say buy oil because of President Biden and his restrictive policies. Now I'm reading where a lot of people are saying $100 a barrel because they can't get long-term financing. It's politically impossible. Wall Street won't touch it. I mean, if that's true, what would it mean for the oil patch and these oil stocks? Yeah, I mean, I sure hope we don't have $100 oil, because as much as I like my long positions with the upstream producers and like my midstream positions that transport the oil, I don't want consumers to have to pay $100 oil. It doesn't affect me. It affects lower income people. So I don't want it to happen. But I think that it is becoming more likely, and certainly we're quite close to 80 now, and it is because of policy concerns. They need to get the production going. Quit fighting production. Let supply demand uh, characteristics play themselves out, please.
Yeah, yeah. Well, I got to tell you, we covered a lot, and, and as usual, we learned a lot from you. Have a great weekend, David, and we'll talk again real soon. Thank you.